Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss some coffee shots of CCSP exam. In this video, I'm going to cover a question which is based on the new syllabus of CCSP. I also made some videos in past on the CCSP question so you can check my CCSP playlist and I'm also planning to launch more and more videos in futures on a similar topic. So if you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so first coffee shot. If he formal computing address which key characteristics of the cloud computing. See, if he formal computing was a part of the new syllabus of CCSP. So if we formal mean lasting for a very short time and if we formal computing refer to the resources that are created when needed and immediately deprovision when no longer needed. Example, this is the instance we have and currently we have utilizing 2 GB. I want to upgrade to 4 GB. I can able to use the if formal computing and I upgrade my instance and I can work for the instance and when as instance is not in use, I can basically deprovision. So what is the primary advantage of if we formal computing in the cloud is it reduce my attack surface because see in order for a hacker to hack anything he need to have access to the instance with their associate configuration and in the case of if we formal computing it is only available for what we use and once we're done with that we can deprovision. Okay so question talking about here is if we formal computing address which key characteristics of cloud computing. So we have a five characteristics like on demand, broad network, resource pooling and all that. So we have a five key characteristics. So this basically address which key characteristics of the cloud computing. Option A, measure services makes sense because uh, measure services give me the visibility about how much we have utilized. And according to that, I can able to manage the instance. Second is serverless. Serverless is not a characteristics. It's a technology. So B is definitely eliminate broad network access. It means you can access your service from anywhere, but that is not a connect with the if formal computing. Resource pooling makes sense because pool of resource are there from which it can able to provide me compute because by end of the day, temporary compute is generated from a resource pool only. But, but, but this is a common feature of a cloud. Resource pooling is a common feature of the cloud. If that cloud provider is providing me if formal computing, I can able to track through the measuring services. Okay, so they are crucial part of the metered services or which is also called as a measure services of the cloud computing. If an organization need a server for only few minutes each day, then paying for 12 hours of computing power is wasteful. So offer the ability to scale very efficiently due to the fewer constraints from the system resource. Developer do not need to worry about setting up or tuning any infrastructure. So by the metering services, by the measuring resources, we can able to track how much we required because default resource pooling is always there. That is why the answer is A for alpha measure services, because measure services is basically the key characteristics, which is addressed with the help of if we formal computing, we can use it and we can withdraw. We can only pay for what we used. Thank God they have a if we formal. That is why we can able to track our resource. Otherwise, if we don't have, then we are using a machine. We only use for two hours. Billing has been done for 12 hours. That is why the key characteristics from a governance point of view, it addresses measure services. If you think from a technical point of view, then answer is resource pooling. Because of pool of resource, that is why they're able to offer me the FFML computing. But we have to think like a manager. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay. Aspirants technology is planning to migrate its internal application to the public cloud because of loading and enhanced availability. They wish to use serverless computing or technology for their application management. What is the primary advantage of using a serverless computing? So let's first understand what is serverless computing see serverless computing is a cloud computing model in which cloud provider allocate machine resources on demand and taking care of the server on behalf of the customer okay so developer of a serverless applications are not concerned with the capacity planning configuration management maintenance fault tolerance or scaling of the containers so serverless computing does not hold resource in a volatile memory 
okay so you have a platform you work on the coding you're doing your codings and all that that demand more instances they demand it will be available okay so that is the one thing we have so serverless computing can simplify the process of deploying the code into the productions and today for the microservices and everything we are using a serverless computing so question talking about here is they want to migrate the application on a public cloud and the reason they have given is they want to enhance the loading and availability it means whenever there is a demand of an application so it can be scaled up and scaled down so they wish to use serverless computing for that so question talking about what is the primary okay what is the primary advantage of using a serverless computing option a lower cost definitely not a primary advantage at lower cost because it come with their license and everything makes sense simplify scalability because in that case customer no need to worry about anything okay as a customer we don't need to be worried about anything because provider is basically taking care of the capacity planning please note down this can be the exam pointer also <clears throat> capacity planning second is basically called as a configuration third we called as a fault tolerance and one more important thing is called as a scaling of containers so when we talking about capacity planning configuration fault tolerance scaling of computing everything is taken care by the cloud provider great security is a common thing more control now here the more control is not there we have a less control so the biggest advantage of moving to serverless computing to enhance the availability is the simplify scalability because i don't need to take care anything as a customer i deployed my code whenever the code required any kind of instance and all that automatically it can able to scale up and scale down according to the need of the application that is where the biggest reason for me to move to the uh, public cloud for the serverless is simplify scalability okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay if we formal computing and auto scaling is the answer keeping a close eye on user data and adding or removing resources when needed without the need for manual input because in back end it can be done automatically but what is the best way to secure the if we formal computing asset in the cloud one thing you need to understand if we formal computing is the computing which is created based on on demand and you can destroy easily okay when you not need you can destroy so this is also lead to the configuration issue because we creating multiple instance but difficult to track which is has been deleted so the question talking about what is the best way to secure the if you will computing so option a appropriate configuration with encryption makes sense by having a common configuration for all the if you will computing we can able to manage them effectively and data which is reside in the encryption we can able to protect for the confidentiality second is vlan with strong access control it come into the picture when you talking about the network but that is also makes sense regularly conduct the vulnerability assessment but that is only a detective control just to check the vulnerabilities protect with the password that is also common control so one control which is basically required is the appropriate configuration if we have a approved baseline configuration for if you formal computing that is basically providing me uniformity and by this way i can able to manage those machines properly okay so we have a predefined configuration we can launch it immediately and whatever the data we have in the machine we will encrypt that so encryption and appropriate configuration will provide the great level of security for the if you formal computing because first of all the if you formal computing is dynamic in nature so if you have a standard configuration which is dynamic in nature with the encryption can able to protect from the unauthorized tenant that's why the answer is basically a for alpha let's move to the next coffee shot okay which storage cluster provide flexibility and lower cost at the expense of performance see storage cluster is basically used to store the data we are using a group of storage to improve the read and write of the data so we have a two type of cluster storage one is called as a loosely coupled storage and one is called as a tightly coupled cluster which is also called as a tightly coupled storage apart from that c and d we are eliminating because that is not a type of coupled storage so by end of the day we have a two type of storage loosely coupled storage and tightly coupled storage see loosely coupled storage is basically mean 
different vendor of storage we can basically use together to support the customer okay so we don't need to depend upon only one vendor we can have a solution from multiple vendor we have a storage from multiple multiple vendors and we can use it together to improve the read and write so that is called as a loosely coupled storage which provide the flexibility and great in the integration tightly coupled cluster they say that if we having a storage it should be from a same vendor and that storage cannot be integrated with other particular vendor networks it is same like uh, this is the person one and this is the person two they are the boyfriend and girlfriend now here what happen is uh, this is the boyfriend and this is the girlfriend okay this boyfriend always do cribbing where you going what you doing and all that he ensure that okay this person should not go to anyone and that create a frustration among them but in the loosely coupled we have a partner one we have a person two girlfriend boyfriend he giving a freedom okay you can communicate with anyone you can speak to anyone so by this way they we have a long lasting relation same thing happen in the loosely coupled loosely coupled mean a group of device which come from multiple vendors used together to support the services by end of the day ultimate goal is to enhance the availability but tightly coupled mean group of systems group of servers group of storage cannot communicate with any other vendor which increase the expenses also and reduce the flexibility in a cloud we mostly demand the loosely coupled storage but loosely coupled storage is come with the security concerns also because random device part of a network which is use random device part of the storage pool can create also the concerns okay so answer in this case is the a loosely coupled storage okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay the question is from a forensic investigation perspective which cloud deployment provide the most advantage Okay, from a customer point of view, if I'm doing a forensic invest investigation in the cloud, which basically provide me most advantage. See, if you go for the public cloud, we don't have much advantage because my data is going to be shared with other customer also. My machine is shared with the other tenant also. So when I'm doing a forensic investigation, we don't have a much visibility. If you go for the private, yes, in the private cloud, we have a end-to-end -end control from the server level to the application level. Okay, so primary advantage of private cloud is the control. but primary disadvantage of private cloud is a cost hybrid is a combination of a two but in that case we have a control over the private cloud but we don't have a control over the public cloud community is a group of companies so the most advantage from a forensic point of view we get in a private cloud only because in a private cloud we have a control over everything at least in a hybrid we have a control over the private but not control over the public in community group of company sharing a common visions and all that so in that case our data and tomorrow if i need to go for investigation i need to take a consent of other companies also but at least in a private cloud dedicatedly instance storage is available to the customer and we have a more control more governance control over the cloud environment that is why i am going with the answer b for beta private cloud okay so remember one of the primary advantage of public cloud is the cost and primary disadvantage of public cloud is a governance what are the primary advantage of private cloud is a control governance primary disadvantage of private cloud is basically called as a cost okay let's move to the next coffee shot okay prab is a security consultant and decided to move significant part of data remember data an application give me second yeah data and application to the cloud environment okay makes sense they want to recognize the benefit of cloud computing such as elasticity it means scale up and scale down and cost saving from metered services and often balance between the security risk versus potential benefit it means risk versus benefit they also want to ensure data process in a cloud is readable only by the authorized application it mean apart from that it should not be readable to anyone not by the other tenant so question document confidentiality also and availability also which technology can be adopt here to balance the security and functionality see public cloud computing i will never recommend because in that case you can't achieve the security hybrid computing okay but cost is another concern so in that case they planning to migrate so they didn't want to use together so hybrid is removed private is expensive so only option is basically there is confidential computing okay confidential computing where encrypt the data in use with the confidential vm 
okay so it is a breakthrough technology which allow you to encrypt the data in use while it is been processed it is simple easy to deployment and does not compromise on the performance so it mean they will process the data even in the encrypted state so the key feature of the confidential computing is that it provide the real time encryption so example like as a cloud customer can encrypt the data in use and taking advantage of security technology offered by the modern cpus which is called your second generation amd epyc which is called as a secure encrypted virtualization extension okay so customer can be confident and the data will be stay private and encrypt even when it process is it clear so the confidential computing can also unlock the computing scenario that was previously not possible so organization now able to collaborate on a research and they can able to process data in a encrypted state so for this the answer is basically the confidential computing it is also called as a homomorphic encryption where the encryption is basically stay persistent even in the use stage that's why the answer is a for alpha okay let's move to the next coffee shot very good question in a virtualized environment software that uses particular uh, physical server resources intensely may exhaust those resources and hence affect vm availability this condition occurs because of the shared environment in a physical server magnifies the severity of resource contention especially when multiple vms are running the same resource intensive software at the same time if in question talking about there is a multiple vms are running and shared the same hardware okay and here the software mean the virtualization and the concern they talking about is uh, when multiple vms are basically sharing the same hardware and all that it lead the resource contention it mean might be one vm is full not able to take the complete ram or unable to get the ram which is required for processing so that condition is called as resource, res uh, resource contention at one point of time vm unable to get the ram and cpu so what is the most effective control we can introduce to mitigate this risk related to the resource contention okay so option a as per the classification of virtual machine based on a sensitivity risk level put in a place suitable resource allocation and reservation policy what is a reservation policy mean we can define limit we can define reservation we can define the matrix limit is a maximum reservation is a minimum that this much this this a minimum thing which required for the machine and this is the maximum which is consumed by the machine so that kind of a reservation policy we can set that that makes sense by which we can able to control the resource contentions option b is define implement the standard operating procedure that detect vms that are throttled due to the resource exhaustion similar to the denial of service and put remedy in place instantly that is also makes sense but it is more like a detective control third disconnect unused physical hardware device and dis disable the clipboard or file sharing services this does not this does not make sense because this is more about from a data copying point of view choose hardware with a smaller footprint again this does not make sense with the question because it talking about the hypervisor security so we left with a and b b is already part of a because classification used to organize the things the group of machine which is sensitive can be part of one group and the group of another machine which is not sensitive can be part of other group and that can be controlled by the resource allocation reservation policies so by which we can define the reservation we can define the limit and we can define the shared values and that policy is already having a throttling parameter so a is more like a governance process that we can basically apply that's why the answer is a for alpha okay just defining a standard operating pr procedure just defining a standard operating procedure will not help me to prevent that okay until unless we define the classification and creating a policies and functions in hypervisor that's why the answer is a for alpha so this is all from my side if you find this video useful do let me know in the comment box that do you want more videos on a similar topics do you want more coffee shots on the scenario based questions and uh, i i will wait for your feedbacks in the comment section and uh, do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic thank you goodbye